darkness you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, I sing, you give life, you give life.
Good evening, friends and family. So good to have you tune in and dial in and be with us again tonight from wherever you are watching. I just pray God's richest love and grace and, and his, his fullness just touch you tonight as you share this time with us. I want to share with you a message tonight, and I, I want to start off by saying, what would it be like? What would it be like uh, to, to get into a place where even if Jesus showed up, nothing happened? What if you think it's not possible that there could be such a place where Jesus could be present and miracles did not take place. I, I want to tell you that in Matthew 13, we find one example of such a thing. We find in Matthew 13 that Jesus was going around and he was helping people. He was healing people. He was setting people free. He was raising the dead. He was doing all kinds of amazing things as he, as he was preaching and teaching and, and traveling through the land. And he, he came to a place called Nazareth. Nazareth, the place that he was from. And as he got to Nazareth, it said that the people were offended by him. They were offended by what he said. They were offended by, by how he presented himself. They did not really understand what Jesus was about. And, and the Bible says that they had unbelief. They had doubt. And so in the place where Jesus showed up, they questioned his wisdom and they did not see Jesus. And I want to start tonight by reading this scripture out of Matthew 13, 55, if you will join me. It says this, from verse 55 to 58. Is this not the carpenter's son, speaking about Jesus? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things. So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he, this is Jesus, now Jesus did not do many mighty things, mighty works there because of their unbelief. My friends, I wonder how many miracles did not happen in Nazareth because the people who were there could not see Jesus? They could not believe. I wonder in our lives how many, how many uh, healings and, and breakthroughs and, 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 and just the, the, the amazing things of God do not take place because we refuse to receive Jesus as a prophet 
of, from God. My message today is called The Miracles That Did Not Happen. The Miracles That Did Not Happen. What if, what if what you see determines what you believe? I know we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. But, but just hang on for a minute today. What if fear or doubt, faith, is built on what we perceive? What if I had two glasses, pairs of glasses here today? One pair of glasses is the glasses of fear, of offense, and of unbelief. And the one pair of glasses is the glasses of faith. What if I said to you today, if I choose to wear these glasses, that everything I see through these glasses will be tainted, will be touched, will be, will be a lens through which fear and offense and unbelief becomes exaggerated. Or what if I said to you, I had another pair of glasses, and this pair of glasses, whenever I put it on, everything I see, faith will be increased, God will be increased, and, and hope will be increased because of what I see through my glasses. And this is the point of my message today is that every single one of us has a choice what view we will have of the world that we're in. Can I ask you today, in your life, if I had to show you these two pairs of glasses, the one represents fear and offense and uh, unbelief and doubt, and the other one uh, uh, represents faith and hope and expectancy from God, which pair of glasses would you say you are wearing every single day? Is it possible maybe that in your life you're not seeing the miracles? You're not seeing the hand of Jesus. You're not seeing God move in the way that Jesus would move in another place because of the glasses you have chosen to wear. It reminds me of a story that took place in the early 1960s. And here we find that the world was an interesting place. The United States and Russia were in a race to get to the moon. They were in a race for space. And uh, uh, in this race, we find that the Russians were ahead. Uh, they had a man by the name of Yuri Gagarin, uh, a famous uh, a cosmonaut, but, uh, an atheist. And uh, he was the first one to make it into space. And he got into space. He circled the earth and came down. And as he, as he came down and, and he was in front of the crowds and in front of the people, Yuri made a bold statement. And he said, when I was up there, I was like an eagle. He said, I, I, I was like an eagle circling the world. And I, I looked, but I could not see God. I searched. I saw no God. I looked at the heavens and I looked at the earth. I viewed everything before me. And I can tell you today, I could see no God in any of those places. And in that moment, all the atheists cheered and said, Yes, Yuri, you have just proven that there is no God. A few months later, a man by the name of John Glenn, an American astronaut, a Christian man, goes up to space. He circles the earth three times, lands on the earth, comes in front of journalists and comes in front of the world audience. And the first thing John Glenn says, I got up there and I saw God. I saw Him everywhere. I felt His glory in the heavens. I, I saw His presence uh, in the stars and in the universe and, and in everything I saw. I felt His power in the radiance of the sun. My friends, I want to tell you that God is everywhere. Here we have two very different statements. Yuri said there is no God. John says there is a God. Which one is correct? My friends, I want to tell you both of them are correct because it depends on the glasses that they were wearing. Yuri was wearing glasses that could not see God because all he could see is his argument against God. But John had his heart set and his eyes tuned to God. And when he wore his glasses and he got to that place, he truly saw God. This is my message to you today, is what glasses are you wearing? Because you could be missing some really powerful things. Let me give you some examples of what that could look like. 
We find in Numbers, uh, uh, Numbers 13 and 14 that, that Israel had, had left Egypt. They'd been broken out of slavery. They'd been delivered. They're entering into their promise. God had spoken great things to them. And all that he asked of them is that they trust him, that they believe him. They get to the edge of the Jordan River. Twelve spies go into the land. Twelve spies come back out of the land. Ten spies were wearing glasses that said, this is not going to happen. This is too hard. This is too difficult. Today, we have lost everything we had hoped for. Two spies came out, and they put on, they were wearing the glasses of faith, and they said, our God is able. Everything is possible with our God. There definitely is a very big difference between those who choose to wear glasses of faith versus those who choose to wear glasses of unbelief. What are the consequences? What are the consequences? Well, the biggest consequence is the type of glasses you choose to wear will show you Jesus when He comes. The type of glasses will show you Jesus when He shows up in your life. Are you sensitive enough? Are you able enough right now to say that if Jesus walked into your life, that you would definitely see him? Or would you be like one of those in Nazareth who saw Jesus and just assumed that he wasn't who he said he was? Those poor Israelites, because of the glasses they chose to wear, found themselves stuck in a wilderness. They were exaggerating their difficulties because their vision was blurred by the glasses that they wore. I tell you, you can take a telescope and put a spider on the front of it and you will think it's an alien invasion. It's so easy when we look at things through the wrong glasses to get a picture of something that is not true. Can you imagine what it must have been like for these Israelites to think how afraid they are, to convince themselves how broken they are. Here we talk about God showing up for a nation, literally destroying Egypt, literally destroying every wagon, every, every soldier, every enemy that came against them. And yet they still could not see the goodness of God. We make a mistake of underestimating our abilities when we wear the wrong glasses. We start to see things as impossible that are completely possible because of God. I tell you, my friends, today, if you're not seeing the impossible become possible, can I challenge you to question whether you are wearing the glasses that is blurring your view? How can a child of God comp ever compare himself to a grasshopper. And yet that's what these guys did. They shouted, they cried out, they said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. They did not recognize who was for them. The scripture tells us he was for you, was greater than he was against you. That our God is mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Our God is, is purposeful in fulfilling his promises. I tell you something, if you wear the wrong glasses, instead of victory, instead of celebration, instead of crying out uh, because of the things that God has done and singing praises and worship, you will be in a place where you are discouraged and you will be crying and, and, and being upset. You'll blame God and you will see your circumstances as being your undoing. But I want to challenge you today. Put on. Put on the glasses of faith. Turn your heart and your eyes towards Jesus. I'll tell you something. It says in verse 58, Jesus did did not do many miracles in that place because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. That sounds so, uh, it just doesn't sound so good to us in this day and age that we, we would miss out just because we would not accept and receive Jesus for he, who He is. I love how this scripture in Mark, in the 6th chapter uh, and verse 6, is this exact same story uh, told again in the gospel of Mark. And, and I love the wording in Mark, because in Mark it literally says that Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. He marveled at their unbelief. Jesus Himself, could not believe that they could not believe. Have you ever been in a place where you literally can say 
that God marveled at your unbelief. I think that's a, a reality for so many of us. So many times in our lives, our unbelief rises to such a level that even God would say, I, I hope, I wished, I wanted them to believe, but they turned away from my blessings because they would not see. We are meant to live by faith, my friends. We were made to live by faith. We were made for the supernatural life. We were made to see impossible become possible. This is who we were created to be. Faith shrinks our problems. Faith shrinks the issues that we deal with in our life. I want to tell you today, faith gives you God's viewpoint. Too often we look at our life through the glasses of of unbelief and doubt and, and, and offense. And we can see the problem being bigger, bigger than, than anything on the, on the face of the earth. And we wear these glasses and, and yet our God is mighty. And if we would just look to Him and believe in Him, we will see mighty things. Faith says, relax, trust God. God is in this. And I'm saying this to you today, my friends. Relax. Trust God. God will take care of this. But look to Him. Look to Him as the author and the finisher of your faith. You see, sadly, the people in Nazareth missed the miracle because they did not see Jesus. They saw something, but they did not see who He was. They were looking for a lion, but He came as a lamb. They were looking for justice, but He came as grace. They were looking for a warrior, but He came as a peacemaker. They were looking for a king, but he came as a servant. They were looking for a fighter, but he came as a lover. I want to tell you today, they were looking for a famous person, but he came as the guy next door. Have you seen Jesus? See, I think where these guys really fell flat is they had a picture in their imagination of who God is. They had an idea of God that was nothing like who He was. And they held so tightly to the picture and the image that they've decided Jesus is, that when He actually showed up to bring health and healing and breakthrough, salvation, new life, abundant life, fullness, eternity in heaven, they could not see it because it did not match the picture that they were holding up. The glasses of faith is powerful because it opens the doors to miracles. You know, the Bible tells us that our faith can move mountains. Our faith is so powerful that it can move mountains. Do you realize that God wrote into the, this creation a back door that even the natural laws cannot be limited when faith shows up? Faith moves mountains. Faith, faith moves God. Matthew 9, 29 says, According to your faith, it will be done for you. According to your faith, it will be done for you. God says that you get to choose how much blessing and how much fullness and how much of Jesus you have in your life. If you believe in a little of God in your life, you will see a little of God in your life. If you believe in a lot of God in your life, you will see a lot of God in your life. If you believe in none of God in your life, my friends, God honors faith. If you believe in none of God in your life, you will see none of God in your life because we choose the glasses we will wear. We choose how we will walk. We choose the faith we will live in. And this is my point, and I'll bring this message to a close. My point is what it says to us in, uh, in John 3, it says, unless, unless you are born again, you cannot, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again, unless you have made a decision to give your heart and your life to God, to surrender yourself to Jesus, to call upon His name and make Him your Lord and Savior. Unless you make that decision, you will walk through life with a blinded sight and you will be missing the very power, the very fullness, the love, the grace, the mercy of the fullness of God. You will not see what is clearly and freely available to those who will believe. If you will believe today, my friends, 
the sight you have is not of your own, it is of God. He opens your eyes, He removes the scales from your heart and from your eyes, and you will truly see what you need to see. But the question I want to ask you right now, and it's an important one, and you may say, but Nico, I've been saved a long time. Or you may say, I've never given my life to Jesus. Or you may say, I don't know what happened. I feel like a blind man walking through the world. I'm not going to question your journey. I'm going to ask you a present tense now here question. Which pair of glasses have you put on? If today you choose to continue to walk with dark glasses, then you will continue to see what these glasses will reveal. But if you choose today to put on hope, faith, an expectant heart, if you choose today to surrender to Jesus and trust Him, He is healing to your body. He is deliverance to your soul. He is life and life more abundantly. But you have to make the choice. Father God, I pray right now for every person watching. I pray, God, that you touch their heart and if their knees need to bend, Lord, bring them to that place. If their hearts need to open to you, Lord, open them now. If their eyes have been shut, Lord, if they've been wearing the wrong glasses, I pray, God. I know, Lord, you said according to our faith, but, Lord, sometimes we don't see what's right in front of us. I pray, Lord, that you would show yourself, even in those dark glasses, that you would show yourself so that they may remove the scales and see, see the light that came to set the world free. Thank you, Lord, today for saving those who need to be saved. Thank you, Lord, for healing those who need healing. Thank you, Lord, for bringing life where there is no life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, my friends. It was so good to be with you today. And I know this is a really short message, but I encourage you today. Your life will drastically change based on the glasses you choose to wear. Faith, hope, and expectation comes. But the choice is, will you receive it by asking God to change your view and change your glasses? God bless you. Love to see you again next week. Come and join us as we celebrate God's word together and we grow together. Write to us, contact us. Uh, just send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Amen.